Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock. It's time for a review show special. Now, this is where I take a deep dive into a particular topic, a particular producer, a particular creator. I really kind of take a deep dive and I explore everything. And today I'm gonna be talking about a trick, uh, a project, a product that has come out recently. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about uh, Get Smarty uh, and the, uh, the American version with the M&Ms. I'm gonna be talking about that. Uh, we're going to be going through everything that you need to know. This review has been a long time coming because I wanted to get it right. And I've managed to get some performance footage from Mark that I can actually use to play this as well. This is, uh, this is an exciting review. Let's get into it. Okay, so before we start, I'm going to play a short interview with Mark talking about... Uh, the project and talking about Get Smarty, talking about the M&M tubes, talking about everything, talking about exactly what this project is. He's going to be talking about it. Let's have a look at that interview and then we'll roll the full review. But I have been on stage with you at Smoke and Mirrors watching you perform this routine and absolutely bringing the house down with nothing more than a Smarty, uh, a smarty tube. It's like, you know, forget about your biggest props. Yeah, you can turn up with your Mind Buster Pros. You can turn up with loaded down with Pro Mystic stuff and Amverdi dies till, you, till, till the cows come home. And there's Mark Bennett rocking up on stage with a smarty tube and a personality and, and just absolutely killing it. Uh, it's, but it's one of those rare tricks. There's not many like this that work for a stage performer, but also if you need a piece of magic that will work for a close-up magician in a banquet situation or a walk-around situation that's really going to stop the show, this is it. I think it's amazing. And I was lucky enough to be invited on the tutorial, and I'm so glad that you invited me because yeah, I want... thank you, because there's so many little bits of insights that I wouldn't have been able to put into that, um, into that project because it was just something my brain... In theory, if I was still doing the, the behind the bar magic side, maybe there would be a little bit more there, but then it still would be parlory style movements. And uh, and being a close up magician, I haven't been one for many, many years. So having your insight and um, routines that you do to, to pass on to people is, uh, was much appreciated. Thanks, buddy. It's amazing. For people that don't know what Get Smarty is, um it is basically a borrowed object a borrowed ring ring um into a sealed a, pack of smarties a pack of sharpies and you're looking at the gimmick there i mean yeah how... so this is uh this is a pack of smarties um that you would hand out to your spectator and um but before you've done that you've vanished the small object probably a lady's ring um and uh all you're gonna do uh to do it is you've got a little bill tube uh located in the smarties tube this is a one-time deal every time you perform this because it's a cardboard tube once you break that seal um don't think oh i'll just reseal it and, it, and be cheap and just say oh it looks like it's sealed they don't care don't be cheap 60p yeah. or less than that i think it's 13 pounds uh from bookers i think someone put up on the uh the facebook group um, so 13 pounds from it. bookers there <laughs> you know, it's 24 tubes or whatever it was so once that's done, that ring will pop out. And what's beauty in, and within the trailer as well, you can see that is that the ring gets stuck um, in the in the lid. So when it comes down, it stops. So all the smarties are out and the ring is just left there. And they're just like they have to rip open the box to get their ring out. Um, and it's it's I love it. You know, I, it's my closer at Smoke and Mirrors. Um, it's reactions uh, of what you want of like what you know that i don't get it and and for the american side um obviously with with get smarty if you haven't seen it yet it's you get four of these gimmicks so you can have these ready set to go and they're off they are but it takes you 30 seconds to reset it's all on the tutorial as you know yeah. and the american version this is uh the m and b tube or m m's tube and uh it's the same style um, but this one here is uh, built in and it's re the tube is reusable. And um, what you do is you get the uh, reseals. Um, so to reseal, so you can just a little light out and you can reseal this unit and you're off to go and to the next table, etc. So, yeah, maybe try and keep your M&Ms. Don't let them have the M&Ms. Pull them into a glass, <laughs> let them ring out and then pull the M&Ms back in. I don't know. But, you know, it's it's I do this on stage. I have a. 
I've got a lot of M and M's. <laughs> so, um... so a lot of people have asked me if this is appropriate for uh, for for a, like a close up magician, and the answer is very simply yes. Yes, this is not. The, but I don't think this is the trick that you would do every table. If you were working a wedding and there's ten tables, this is one maybe you'd do it once or twice. You throw a couple in your case and yeah. you do it for those two special tables, and then you throw a couple more in your case for your next one. Could you do it every time? Could you? buy two get smarties and have eight prepped in between each table go i think you could but i think it's one of those tricks where it's so impossible yeah. it's so impossible and people will remember it so much so impossible that you kind of don't want to do that you kind of want to just keep it for that head table and show the bride and groom whatever it may be and i mean my Favorite way of doing it is with the ring and string routine, and ring and string has always been one of my favorite routines. Before. And you get it on the tutorial. Thank you. I for teach that. how to do my ring and string routine on the tutorial, just as a bonus. But on the tutorial, we go through a bunch of different stuff as well. I mean, there's so many different ideas and tips for yeah, you the digital force bag. Um, you know, um, utilities that you already have. Um, so it's it's just one of those. It's a utility device for. Um, I think one one magician, his ring to impossible location um, was on stage. He he knocked his table uh, by accident himself and his impossible location prop fell to the floor and smashed to smithereens. And he was like, I need something new, but I was still want it. And it was an organic ring to lo lo impossible location. It was organic. He liked it and he just wanted another organic version and um and he had heard about get smarty and he goes oh, i just i need it i just need it now before it's released please 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 and he's been using it now for i think three or four months in his stage shows um because he's just he need he wanted something organic and that's what's nice about this i think somebody else i spoke to i think it was mr nardi actually mr nardi said randy goes now we've all had a build tube or if some of you may not have but we've had a build tube and what what you know, what is a bill tube? This metal tube with a pole going through it with a padlock on. And the only person who would ever, you would ever see with one of these is a magician. Don't get me wrong. It's a fantastic, you know, I used to use the bill tube in the, in the bar days. And um, hence I wouldn't even know uh, why, the, uh, how to make one of these in, in some respects. And, and that, and that's what I like about it. It's the organic feel of it of, I wouldn't do this every single table into table to table. I think on the, 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 the trailer as well you see tom wright uh, performing it and he's building it up he's got this so many little nuances where he just builds it up and builds it up and builds it up to disappointment and to the bang crescendo of opening up that smarties and the whole table just erupts so this is fantastic and you don't really want to you know that's a anger night mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it is that really oh my gosh and i can i said that who was i speaking to i can't remember I don't know. I was speaking to somebody and I said, I would be shocked if within the next two to three years, this is does not appear on some sort of magic special on TV. Because <laughs> I can just see somebody walking into a shop, vanishing a ring and going, hey, go and grab yourself some Smarties from over there or go and grab yourself some sweets. And they go pick up a Smarty tube and then they crack it open. I can just see that. That 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 would be a, a dynamo. Sorry, Stephen Frame thing. That would be a, a a David Blaine thing. I could just see that as something that. Thanks, it, pal. No, it really is. It's amazing. I love it. 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 Right. So, the M and M tubes, the uh, the the smarty get smarty. Right. Uh, I was aware of this right from the very beginning. I'm very good friends with Mark Bennett. Now, I'll tell you that right now. I'll also tell you that I'm on the project. Uh, Mark asked me to come along to Smoke and Mirrors, his bar in Bristol, his theatre in Bristol, and co-host the project with him. And I was only too happy to do so because Mark has done so much for me over the years. And he's one of the people in Magic that I would do anything for. If he comes knocking, I'm going to help him because he is, one of the, uh, he is one of the nicest and most giving people in Magic as far as I'm concerned. So I am on this project, giving a few ideas ideas i am also um you know good friends with mark but this is my full impartial opinion i would not appear on somebody else's project if i didn't think it was any good so the fact that i'm on there should tell you exactly what i think about this mark showed me this when he first developed the idea before the m, &M version even came to fruition he showed me this and he showed me the smarty version first of all 
And immediately I was like, dude, that is so clever. That is ridiculously clever. And the reason I thought it was so clever is because bill tubes have been around for ages. You know, there are a million bill tubes out there. And normally they look like nothing on God's green earth. You know, normally they just look like a, a brass tube with a padlock at the end. And, you know, it's like, what the hell is that thing? That's a that's a, this. OK, right. Fair enough. Whatever. Um, and, and different people over the years have, have, have come up with different ways of actually making the bill tube look more um, organic. You know, Nick Einhorn had a version with a pen a few years ago, which was very good. Um, but I think this is the ultimate version. I really do. What Mark showed me back in the day when he first showed me this was a way of actually building a bill tube into um, a Smarty container which was genius really when you think about it because over here in the UK everybody knows what Smarties are. Everybody knows what Smarties are. They're a very, very common candy. Uh, and so having the ability to borrow a ring, for example, and then have it appear inside a Smartie container by actually ripping open that Smartie container and tipping out the Smarties and they're all in there and in there's the ring. I'm like, oh my God, Mark, you've just created something that everybody's going to want. And then he came back to me a few weeks later and he was like, oh, we got a problem. Um, it, it, people just don't have Smarties in America. People, you know, people just don't eat Smarties. I'm like, why would Americans not eat Smarties? And he was like, right, I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board. And he eventually came up with the M&M version. Uh, and so the M&M version could be used in the UK, but it's really designed for more of an American market. While the Smarty version is used for the UK, maybe Europe. I don't know if they have Smarties in Europe, um, but they basically do the same thing. In essence, what they are are bill tubes. Now, there are differences between the two, and you have to be aware of that. And one of the big differences is that um, with the uh, with the Smarty version, right, what you have to do, and I'm, I'm going to um, let you know this now, you get a couple of gimmicks with it. You get a few gimmicks. And what you have to do with the Smarty version is you make up a new tube every single time you do the trick. And the reason is... It's a cardboard tube, right? So what you do at the end of the routine is it's completely sealed. That's what makes this routine so good. The the the, the Smarty tube is completely sealed up so that when they go to open it up, you're ripping it open and you're tipping out all the candy in there and you're showing that in amongst all this candy is their ring or coin or whatever it is that you want to have appear in there, which is fine. Um, but because you're ripping open the tube because it's made out of candy, you're then going to have to prep another one. But you can prep two or three beforehand if you want to. So if you're going to go and do a, a close-up job, for example, uh, or a walk-around gig, you could, you could prep like five or six of them, and you're prepared to do this five or six times in one night. Now, how Mark does this, Mark does not do close-up very often, if at all. What Mark mainly does is he performs on stage. He is, and I've said this many, many times, one of the best comedy magicians in the world today. And I stand by that. Him and Alan Hudson and a couple of other people, as far as I'm concerned, are the best when it comes to stage comedy magic. So Mark performs this mainly on stage. And I have seen him perform this live at Smoke and Mirrors many, many times. And literally bring the house down with this with just one little cardboard tube and with a ring a borrowed ring he can literally bring the house down that's how, that's the strength of this because now it, look we all know borrowed object to impossible location is great it's why magicians have been putting bills in lemons and limes and cards in boxes and cards on ceilings and god knows what we've been doing that since day one right? Because it's always going to get a great reaction. How has that thing got into that place? It's impossible for that thing to get to that place, right? With a borrowed ring or a borrowed coin, going into an object like a Smarty container, that is just simply astounding. It really is. It's just impossible. It's impossible that a ring could go into a smarty container. It's just, it just, it just can't be done. So the fact that this is what's happening is that that's why borrowed object to impossible location is such a popular premise in magic, if that kind of makes sense. Now, with that in mind, um, what we have here is. Obviously, the thing's going to the impossible location, absolutely. But there's a ton of other things that you can do with it as well. And before I tell you those other things, 
I need to digress because I haven't really told you about the M&M tubes. So the M&M tubes, you can use the same one over and over again, which is great. You don't have the same problem with the cardboard where you're ripping it open. It's a plastic tube. You can do the same one over and over again. But you get gimmicks that allow you to seal it every single time. So once you've done the performance with it, uh, literally maybe 30 seconds and you'll be able to reset it. And the reset is resealing it. You get special gimmicks that allow you to reseal this 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 tube, which is gimmicked, will then allow you, because obviously it's not a plastic tube, it's not a cardboard tube like the Smarty version. So with the M&M version, you bring out a, a sealed, you know, plastic container of M&Ms and they can unseal it and they can see that it really is sealed. And then you get the same result, the things going into the impossible location, right? So those are the two differences between the M&Ms and between the Smarties. It's in essence the same trick. You would perform the Smarty version, you'd perform the... Um, the M&M &M version, and you would basically, it's the same thing. The difference is how you set them up for each market. Uh, it's a quicker reset with the M&Ms, um, but there is a bit of a reset. Whilst with the Smarties, it's, you know, you have to prep a few of them before you go to your gig, unless you're doing it on stage like Mark does and like I do. So I'm going to tell you about the tutorial, but before I do, let me just run for you a performance. So I'm going to show you a couple of videos now. Now, first of all, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of TikTok style videos. Now, these are videos that uh, uh, people have used. You know, Mark sent these over to me. I asked him to send me some live performances because I really think that this is the sort of trick that you want to see in a live performance environment. So I asked him to send me some videos and he sent me a wonderful live performance of him doing it at Smoke and Mirrors. Uh, no editing, no nothing. You're going to see that. And then there's a couple of videos showing you this being done on social media. Now, a lot of people use, you know, a lot of different magic to do social media performances. And you'll be able to see that this is the perfect trick for social media. But you'll also see it's perfect for war crowd. It's perfect for close up. And then you're going to see Mark's performance in a stage environment. I love performing this in stage because the problem, it's not a problem. It's not an issue at all. Um, but when in, with a walk around performance, you have to put the tube somewhere, right, to have it loaded. Now, there's a lot of different options. You can have it in your back pocket, you have it in your inside jacket pocket. Tom Wright has contributed some amazing ideas to this project as to what he does with it. But with stage, which is where I tend to use it as a one and done thing, I can have it in my case. So I can borrow the ring, have them hold onto the ring, give somebody else the smarties at the beginning of the act, and I'm done. I'm done before they even realize anything's happening, which is just so good. So let's have a look at all of those performances and I'm gonna bring it back to the studio and we'll talk about the tutorial. Good, yeah, hey. Happy, yeah, I'm good, I'm all right. And where do you teach English, whereabouts? Uh, in Cheltenham. In Cheltenham, who? Oh, yeah. woo -hoo. I can't afford to live in it. No, 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 not there. near the Montpellier area. No, definitely no, 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 no. Do you know what, no, I, I used to live in Cheltenham. I used to live in Cheltenham, so I used to run a nightclub called Enigma many, okay. many moons ago. And uh, when I first moved there, and I, I, tried, I lived in Montpellier above the wine bar. So I, lived. I know, it was all right, it was very nice. And then I moved to Bristol, and I thought, oh, Bristol's got a Montpellier. It does. It's not the fucking same. No. Not the fucking same, trust me. <laughs> so let's have a little look at the ring then. Let's have a little, take it off for me. There you go. Let's have a look at that. How's the muffin pile? There you go. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. Oh, it's inscribed. That's nice. Love all the boys from Cheltenham <laughs> RFC. <laughs> Thanks for the good times. <laughs> Very nice. Wow, that's branded as it well. Is, it yeah. is branded, yeah. Matt Allen. <laughs> Matt. Oh, Mataland. Yeah. Mataland. <laughs> do, you, do you wear this often? Yeah. Yes, yeah, filthy. Yeah. It's filthy. Let's have a bit of a clean. <sighs> that's better. Hold on to that for a second. Um, let's speak to this chap here. What's your name, sir? Tim. Hi, Tim. What do you do, Tim? Delivery driver, anything we can get for Christmas? <laughs> yeah, anything we can yeah, sort something out? Love it, I like Tim. Tim's a good guy, isn't he? I like Tim. He's a nice guy. And um, what was your name, sir? Kevin. Kevin. And what do you do, Kevin? Factory Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy and Baby, can you just hold the ring for me? Yeah. You got it? Yeah. Now I'm going to let go of the, uh, the top bit so okay. you keep hold of that, otherwise it just falls. There we go, and just twist your hand like that. That's lovely, wonderful. Now, uh, t no, what was your name? Kevin. Kevin and Tim. Tim, okay, Tim. Uh, Kevin, I'm gonna ask you to help me for a little helping hand. What are you doing? Oh, sorry. We're only gonna be 30 <laughs> minutes tops, 30 minutes tops, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, fine. 
Right, I need you to hold on to that for me. Hold on to that for me. And, uh, oh, we also need a, uh, is there a wizard in here this evening? Anybody, is there a wizard? <laughs> wizard, from, uh, maybe from Hogwarts. <laughs> Hogwarts wizard, oh, there is a Hogwarts wizard, Hogwarts wizard. Um, <laughs> no, the, the only reason I'm asking is about Hogwarts wizard. Um, do you have your Hogwarts wand with you? Well, what kind of fucking wizard are you? <laughs> right, okay, no wonder you went in Hufflepuff. <laughs> Rubbish. Um, yeah, use those. Okay. okay, all right, well. M&M's. M&M's, minis, apparently. All right, okay, all right, fair enough. Oh, there we go, there we go, right. Here we go. Hopefully this works. <laughs> this is great, here we go. Ready? Now, keep it up, keep it up so people can see it, so people can see it. Here we go. No, that's a, that bounced a lot fucking heavier. <laughs> Sound, you know what? You know what? I was expecting it to bounce cheap. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what's worrying. <laughs> yeah. Right, uh, um, right. Just ah, uh, Tim, stand for me, please. Check your left hand pocket, left hand pocket. It's amazing. Honestly, it's amazing that you're actually fucking looking. <laughs> Not Jesus, mate. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Crazy guy. Crazy guy. Crazy guy. Crazy guy. Crazy guy. Listen very carefully. Shh, shh, shh. Listen very carefully. Shake the box. Hold out your hand for me. Check it out. Yeah, that's not it, is it? No. 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 <laughs> A bit big. That looks like a cock. Uh, no, that's not it. May come in later. No, it's not. It's not. Oh no, that's the lady from the last show. She's, she was a large lady. <laughs> right. Um, right. This is not going so good. Wait, wait. Wait. Smarties. Do me a favour. Open the top. No. Sealed. What's inside? Yeah, what did you expect? <laughs> it's a smart issue. <laughs> I'm going to get this all cleared up, oh, trust me. I'll get this all cleared up, don't worry. I've got something out here just to actually help you along and you'll be fine. Um, oh, there you go. Ring, love. Yeah, ring. yeah, fuck this. <laughs> Did he go off? <laughs> Is he still there? Yeah. Shit. Oh, that's a dud, bugger. Oh, that's so annoying. That's so annoying. Um, right, okay, well, uh, brilliant, thanks very much. <laughs> What's gonna happen? We're gonna have a... Oh, wait, 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 wait. A little bit missing. Oh, you are, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sealed? Sealed? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sealed, yeah. Okay, let's see if we can break it open. I have nails for this. Oh, have you got the na nails? I haven't got the nails. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Wait. oh, oh, oh. <gasps> Pop open the top. What's in there? Smarties. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, M&M's. I'm sorry, I'm at M&M's. Well, they're not bloody small, are they? Look at the size of them. Those Americans, what they say is mini. I mean, fucking mini. Inflation. Here we go. Hold out your hand yeah, for me. Okay. Here we go. Ring, lads. Oh. You're wearing some rings. Yeah. Could I borrow one of those, please? You can slot it into the ring box with me there, like this. Wonderful. And then the camera can see this as well. Can you see that? This will stay in here the whole time. I'm going to leave the ring box there. I have some Smarties. Watch. One, two, three. If you lift your hand up now, open up the box for me. Open the seal, it should hopefully. There we go. <laughs> All the smarties. Notice there's one thing, look, right there. <laughs> Brilliant! And that is my vision. <laughs> Lovely hands, but I'm more interested in those rings. 
can I borrow one of your rings? Oh, that one especially. Am I going to get it back? Of course you will. So go ahead, take it off for me. Okay. Lovely, and place it into the ring box. Lovely, that's nice and secure. You can all see that at home. I'm going to leave that just over there like this. Other hand on top. Okay. Perfect. And just for taking part, I have a little gift in the Santa stocking. Smarties. It's not much, but it's definitely going to be worth it at the end. So I'm going to let you hold this as well. Lovely. Now, watch the ring. Watch carefully. Here we go. Three, two, one. Done. Did you feel that? Oh, I don't know. Let's open it up. Gone. Completely oh, gone. my ring? Have a look on your finger. The other one. I'm joking. I'm not that good. That would have been amazing. That would have freaked me out. <laughs> no, but look, you've got the Smarties. Tell you what, break the seal. Okay. Nice. And just dump them all in my hands. Every single one of those. All the way. Can you hear something oh inside? My oh my God. Go ahead, rip it open. It's my ring. It's my... There it is. How do you do so that? So the tutorial is basically me and Mark sitting in smoke and mirrors and talking about all the different ways that you can use this. Now, uh, obviously, Mark talks about his main routine and the way that he actually performs that main routine and what he does with this particular prop in order to get the reactions he gets from it. And you're not just getting a tutorial on how to use this. You're getting all of the experience and tips and tricks that Mark has gleaned from over the years. And here's the thing, Mark has taught more magicians how to do stage magic than almost anybody outside of Rodney Piper. So he knows a thing or two about performing and you're gonna get glimpses of that in this tutorial as well. Uh, on top of that, you're going to get me and Mark talking about a bunch of different routines and a bunch of different ways of using this. Because in essence, what you have here is you have a way of secretly loading something into a hidden chamber in a uh, stick of candy, in some candy. So you can use this for prediction systems. You can use this for coins. You can use this for cards. You can use this for transpositions in between um, one set of candy and another set of candy. You can use this for or so many different ways. One of my favorite uses for it in a close-up situation is at the end of a ring and string routine. And actually what I did on the project is I taught my full ring and string routine. So this is the ring and string routine that I actually use in close-up in almost every single gig. And I taught that full routine in full. So you can see exactly how to do that routine and exactly what I do. I break it down step by step. And if you're a close-up performer and you want you don't do ring and string and you want to include a killer ring and string routine in your act, you're going to get to learn mine and you're going to get to learn how to actually incorporate the ring and string routine into the Get Smarty gimmick so that you can have that ring vanish and appear in a Smarty container or an M&M &M container that's been in full view from the entire beginning of the trick so there's so much you can actually do with this and a lot of the time the tutorial is a weak part uh, of various different projects but that's not the case here the tutorial is really well done uh, myself and Mark go through everything with a fine tooth comb. You're going to get tons of ideas. And you're not going to use everything, but different people use different things. Uh, between us, we talk about how to perform this on stage, how to perform this in kids shows, how to perform this close up, how to perform it walk around, how to perform it mix and mingle, how to perform it in a banquet situation, how to perform it informally, how to perform it on social media. Regardless of where you perform and regardless of your audience, you're going to find the information here to be able to have a few different routines depending on the way that you want to go with it. That's why this project is so good. And it really is good. You can call me biased if you want to because Mark's a friend. You can call me biased if you want to because I'm on the project. I totally get that. But I wanted to be on this project because I wanted to be associated with this trick because I think this trick is amazing. And it, you know what? I'll, I'll finish off by saying this. I speak to so many magicians these days that want to learn how to perform on stage. They want to learn how to take that leap to go and do stand-up magic and stage magic because close-up isn't enough. They want to do more. And I always give them the same piece of advice. Find a trick that you can do close-up, that you can get comfortable with doing close-up, that you can then use on stage and it'll play big enough to be able to be performed in a stage environment because then you're going to be less nervous. If you're learning a brand new trick, like let's say you're learning Dean's Box, specifically to perform on stage. Well, you're doing the trick for the first time on stage. It's very nerve-wracking. But if you take something like, let's say you get really good at using Get Smarty, 
and you put it in your close-up shows and you put it in your mix and mingle set and you put it in your wedding gigs and your corporate gigs and you get really good at doing that close-up. Now, when you put that into a stage performance and you go, right, I'm going to do this on stage and I'm going to do this trick to close my show, well, now it's going to get an even stronger reaction. Not only that, you're going to be more comfortable performing it. And the reason you're going to be more comfortable is because the flight time you've had using the prop in a close-up environment. So if you want to eventually be a stage performer, getting something like that is going to be like a cheat code towards becoming a stage magician because it's going to give you a prop that you're going to be able to perform on stage, but you're going to have that flight time from when you're a close-up performer. Look, I don't need to sell this anymore. I'm telling you, this is an amazing trick. And if you want something that's very different, very unique, that just works flawlessly, this isn't the one, this isn't the trick that you're going to be doing 100 times in one night. This is not the trick that you're going to be doing 20 times a day in a residency. This is the trick that you're going to go and you're going to perform on the head table at the wedding. You're going to perform it to the CEO at the corporate gig that you're doing. You're going to perform it to the VIP at that next nightclub gig that you're doing. That's where you're going to use this. I'm not saying you can't do it multiple times in one night. You can. But I think this is going to be the special thing. And the visual, I will say one more thing. The visual of when you pull, because normally with a build tube and you're wanting, let's say, a ring to appear in a build tube, you just tip it out and you go, there's the ring, ta-da. The visual of opening up that candy and tipping it out into their hands and they see all the candy fall out and they see their ring amongst it, absolutely brilliant. The visual of that looks so good it really does look so good i love that i love that visual i really do and there's routines in there where the tran the candy transposes like you have um the ring and you put the ring over here and you snap your fingers and it turns into skittles and the reason is inside the skittles is the ring there's so many different ways you're going to go with this but i'm going to give it a hundred percent i recommend this to everybody amateur hobbyist professional semi-professional stand-up performer close-up performer kid show performer whatever you are this is something that you should definitely use and the fact that Mark has gone to the trouble of having different versions for different countries shows how much he um, he really wants this trick to be a success and the fact that he's got his own theatre and he can perform any magic that he wants to and he chooses to do this in his stage show tells you everything that you need to know about it gets 100%, it gets my highest recommendation. So there you go, guys. That's another review show in the bag. Happy Sunday. Now, you want to see more videos like this? Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Don't forget, if you want to check out the Q&A from earlier on, you can do so right now. It is live. It went live at 12 o'clock. If you want to see the interview I did with Jack Rhodes on uh, on Saturday, please do so. You can go check that out. It went up on Saturday. It's there in the, uh, the list. And on Friday, I did a review of the Nth Degree by uh, uh, Vanishing Ink and John G. John goes to Pharaoh. If you want to see that, and I performed six of the routines out of the book as well, then you can do that by checking out the video that went up on Friday. Don't forget, you want to join the Netrix. It's www.thenetrix.com. Go check it out. See what all the fuss is about. And uh, if you haven't heard, Rich Relish has joined the Netrix. And on the next upload, we have a metric ton of Rich Relish routines. Very, very excited about that. Welcome aboard, Rich. We've been waiting for you. I will see you again soon. Have a great Sunday evening. My name's Craig, and this is Magic TV. Mm -hmm.